Hi, Aletha here with Create Your Future. Create Your Future is giving away a free course, How to Find Your Blocks to Manifest Anything Fast. I have courses available, and I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So everything is in the description box below. So just check it out. Often I will hear from my clients that, what do I, how do I navigate through the current 3D while I am internally manifesting or living from the end of already having what it is my heart's desiring. It could be with a specific person where externally the version is not what you want to experience. Internally, you're living from the version of that person you want to experience and be in a relationship with. It could also be your health that you are internally saying, I am well, I have perfect health, but externally, you're still walking through the symptoms in your 3D reality. Same thing with money. You can be saying internally that I am wealthy, that I have more than enough money to cover all of my expenses, that I earn more money than I have expenses, but externally in the 3D, you still may be coming up short financially and having to walk through some difficult situations. You may be internally wanting to reverse a situation in your life, whether it's work, career, family, whatever it may be, but the external world is still showing you the reflection of your past thoughts. And you have to navigate that as well as live from the end of having what you want. And they're in complete conflict with one another because why? They're opposite. Otherwise, you wouldn't be wanting to do that if what you saw in your 3D and what you were experiencing in your 3D was exactly what you wanted. There would be no reason for you to internally revise that into something else. So there is that conflict. Of the, it's opposite of what you're actually living from internally. How do you navigate that? How do you walk through that? How do you interact with the 3D while you're internally living from a different state of consciousness? Number one, you remember and you realize and you make yourself, you know, you make yourself believe this, that the 3D isn't real. It is our reflection of your past thoughts, meaning that specific person that you're having to have interaction with isn't real. That's a reflection. They're acting the way they're acting. It's not pleasing to you. It's not what you want. It's the old version. So they're an illusion. Because what's real is what's going on inside of you internally in the moment. The new version, the new story that you're creating. The 3D is nothing more than your old stories being reflected back to you and they are not real. The symptoms are not real. One of the things that I do to prevent fear if I'm ill and I'm having symptoms that I don't want in my 3D, don't want to experience, however I know they are only a reflection of past thoughts and fears that I've had, and so internally I'm saying that I have perfect health while externally I'm still dealing with pain or just a disability of some kind. And how do I, how do I handle that with, without, you know, feeling panicked, it's never going to go away, you know, all those negative things that come to our minds. And is this really working? Well, I basically, I tell myself that this is a, what's happening to me in the 3D isn't real. It's temporary because what is real is what's going on inside of me right now. And inside of me, I am imagining and I am having inner conversation that says I have perfect health, that I am free of all illness, disease, and infirmities of every kind. When I have to walk through the negative situations in my 3D from a specific person, I could become all upset and emotional with what they're saying and doing or not saying and not doing instead of allowing that emotion to overpower me and cause me to spiral and create more of what I don't want, I remind myself the 3D is only a reflection of the past thought. That guy, that girl, they're not real. I don't care what they're saying to you, it's not real. I don't care what they're doing to you, it's not real. And is it a hard pill to take? Yes, very much so. But you have to, you have to swallow it. It may be a large pill that leaves a lump in your throat, but you've got to swallow it. And, the, and when you swallow it, the swallowing represents moving out of the 3D, 
from thinking that it's real and into your internal self where you are imagining that person or that situation being exactly what you want it to be and staying there no matter what you're seeing in the external world. And you swaddle that pill of, I will not give in to the 3D because I know it's not real. What is real is what I'm saying right now in the moment and I will persist in it because I know if I persist in it and I stay faithful to it, it will show up in my 3D and whatever is happening right now in the current 3D will go away. It will disappear. It cannot stay. If I take my consciousness off of it and I put my consciousness somewhere else, wherever I have my consciousness, that has to become my reality. It's the law. It's not if it will, maybe it will. What do you think? What, did, what, you know, get some confirmation from somewhere else, you know, go through all of the different channels on YouTube telling me what to do. No, it's the law. The law is if you change your consciousness and you, you become so absorbed and then absorbed in what it is that you want, that that's your every thought and you feel that, that has to become the next reality. And if you, and the rest of that stuff out there in the 3D will, it will disappear, it'll fade, it'll go away. And your, your special person will show up the way you want them. If you stay in the story inside of you, no matter what they're saying to you externally right now, in the moment you have to live from the end and feel the feelings of already having and being the person you want to be. Self-concept is so important. Who would you be if you were with your SP? What would your personality be like? What would you feel? Would you feel safe, secure? Would you feel confident? Would you feel joyful? Would you be um, just elated? Would you, would you be, what would you be like? You probably wouldn't be walking around crying and whimpering and wanting that person because you already have them and they're already committed to you and they're already loving you and giving you everything your heart needs so that you're just bursting with joy and love and bliss. That's who you have to become. That's your new self-concept. You, you apply that to everything for your health, money, whatever it may be. You have to become the person who is experiencing that. And how do you do that? You do that by literally imagining what I would, who, what's my personality going to be if I'm married to that person? What's my personality going to be if I have more than enough money to cover all of my expenses? What's my personality going to be if I'm not, if I'm not hindered by this illness? What will I think? What will I feel? Where will I go? What will I say? What will I do? Sit down and write it out and create your self-concept to be different than the one you're walking in right now because that's going to create more of what you do not want. You have to become new inside. Put off the old nature and, and live from the new. Put off the old self and live from the new self. You have to create that whole new image of you and live from her or him and be whatever it is your heart's desiring internally, no matter what is showing up externally in your world. Let it go, it does not matter. Um, came from a situation recently where the external world is not what I want it to be and it's very hurtful and very painful and having to navigate through that, interacting with the people that are treating me in the way that I don't want to and want them to. And guess what? Isn't everything me pushed out? So my self-concept somewhere along the line created that. My doubts, my fears, my anxieties, my insecurities created that. My imaginal scenes, whatever I was thinking, if I'm thinking they're gonna have negative thoughts towards me, they will. So I need to change that. Do I need, and does it happen overnight? It can happen very quickly. But you have to give, you have to live in, in, in the understanding. If it's not happening in a split second, which is what we want, we are a, a McDonald's fast food kind of society. We gotta have everything right now. Remind yourself it's only temporary. As long as you are living internally from what it is your heart's desiring, as long as internally you are being that self-concept of you that you want to experience externally and which is different than what you are right now. The situation that I was in will change. I know that it's the law, but it won't change unless I change inside, unless I change my perspective about it, unless I change my views about the people and the situations that are occurring. If I can continue to walk around thinking that they don't like me or they don't, or they don't appreciate me, they don't value me, um, they want other things and other people, I'm not important to them. If I do that, then that will continue to show up in my 3D in very hurtful, painful ways. 
but inside, I'm this other person who has everything my heart desires in every area of my life, not just the money, not just the SP, not just perfect health, not just the fabulous family, whatever it is that my heart's desiring or your heart's desiring, inside I am living as that total human being, that person. I see myself as that. She's confident. She's strong. She's powerful. She knows she's the operant power of her reality. And then she is in control of everything and everyone. And then she does it with love. That everything in her life is about love. And that everything and everyone must conform to her. And in, in doing that, she knows it will have to show up. If, if somebody is treating you right now in an unkind way, change your perception of them internally that they love you and adore you and treat you with kindness and respect all the time. And that's what will show up because they have to conform. There's this thing like an energy. See, we're not separate from anything or anyone at all. You can't see it in your, with your, um, your physical eyes, but in the metaphysical world, you are connected to everything. So kind of imagine in your mind that there's like a, a, a beautiful, wonderful golden cord between you and the people around you, everyone. I'm talking about the people you pass in the, the grocery store, uh, the, wherever you go, whatever you do, strangers, you are connected to all of them. When you decide that you want to think about a person, you activate that cord, that wonderful, beautiful energy cord. And, and when you activate that energy cord, they get your message. So for a specific person, you got a cord between you and them. And so beautiful, wonderful energy cord. And it will do, it will transmit to that other person exactly what you are thinking and feeling. You're thinking about them in a positive way, they're getting that feeling. You think about them in a negative way and all the things they've done to you and how, how much you really can't stand the situation and them maybe, they get that message. Well, what if you're walking, but then if you do the opposite, like the positive, what if you are, are constantly thinking and activating that beautiful golden cord of energy between you and that person with thoughts of love, with thoughts of, appreci uh, thoughts of appreciation, with thoughts of joy, with knowing that they love you and adore you, telling you that, that you are the this, this most special person in the world to them. Whatever it is you want to hear from that person, whatever it is you want to experience. I mean, I've done this with people that weren't specific people in my life, and I wanted them to change their mind about something. And because in my mind, changing their mind took a lot of pressure off of everything and everyone in that situation. And guess what? I went, it was a Monday night, and I've told this story before, so I apologize if you've heard it. But the next night, I found out that that person changed their mind. What did I do? I imagined in my mind that I heard them telling me or somebody, I can't remember exactly how it went, but they were telling someone they changed their mind and everything is fine. They've got some new plan. During the day when I would feel nervous about the whole situation immediately, I said, no, they changed their mind and something better is working out for them. That night I ran into some people, this was my family, I ran into my family members and it was also my grandson. And so he changed his mind. I was told by his parents, changed his mind, and something, other, something else worked out for him that was fine and perfect and wonderful and everything was okay. So we, what, what he got, my mess, there's a golden cord between him and I and there's a love bond between him and I and that's why I wanted it to work out in that way because of love for him, wanting his life to be perfect and beautiful. And so that's what you have to do for your SP too. You need to send them your love, your heart. Not of hate, not of I want an apology. No, send them love and that you are their wife or their life partner, whatever it is. You send them feelings that you want returned back to you. So if you're sending them feelings of discontent and unhappiness, unhappy, being unhappy, then that's what they, they will come back. You know what happens? They think it's their thought. So if you're walking around saying, I am Mrs. Whatever, I am married to whomever, they're gonna get this idea, you know what, I wanna marry that person. And they'll think it's their idea. If you're, they're blocking you on social media and, and, you, and they're not, you know, they don't answer your texts, you're blocked. You're, don't try to find them. Don't try to get to them through other means. 
let it go, and inside, simply see yourself communicating with them and them telling you that they love you and adore you, whatever it is you want to hear, and that that communication is open and free and transparent and is full of love, and then allow the universe, the God in you, to bring it to you. You don't have to do anything but live from the vision, the, the vision of having that person in communication with you, loving you, and valuing you. And that's all you have to do. Let it come to you. You don't have to chase anyone. Chasing is desperation. Chasing, chasing is coming from not having, from lack. It's tempting. I know I'm human. And I've done it. But I'm saying don't. <laughs> and I've learned the hard way. Stop if you are. Don't chase. Imagine. And live from whatever you've imagined, the beauty of being with that person. And, and you don't have to figure out how they unblocked you. You just figure out, or, how, or you don't have to figure out why you haven't seen them. Maybe you're not blocked, but they're just out of your life for, they've been out of your life for a while and you want to bring them back. You don't have to figure out how any of that took place or is, will take place. All you have to do is see the end of being with them that you're together, you're, you're walking in the park holding hands, or, or you're talking on the phone, or you're texting, or you're communicating via social media. You're married. Whatever you want your end to be. And you live from that. Because what happens is when we are living from the end, but we want all these little things in between, we're doing multiple, like they're individual manifestations. So you no sooner get rid of one where, oh, I'm gonna get a text message tonight. Bum, 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 all day long. I'm, I'm getting a text message tonight and I've done this. And you get one, cool. But I didn't get the ultimate end that I want that person to be committed to me, no. All I got was another text message. And that was fine and it, it made me feel good for a while and then guess what, it's a pill faded, didn't it? The, the pain, you know, it's like a pain pill. It eases the pain, but after the 12 hours or the 24 hours, however long the pill takes, however long you know that pill will prevent pain, the pain starts to come back, doesn't it? And now we need another dose. It's a drug. And we need more and more and more. If you, you want to stop that. You live from the end of having what you ultimately want with that person. And stop doing all these little tiny uh, manifestation things. And are you going somewhere and you want it to work out a certain way? Fine, you can do that, there's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, you should be working from the end of having what it is your heart's desire. If you wanna be married, live from the end of that. Don't figure out how you got there. Don't figure out how they got unblocked. Don't figure out how they came back into your life. Don't figure out how they changed their mind or why they changed their mind about you. Just know they did and you're experiencing the feelings and the love of being with that person and that they love being with you. Create an imaginal scene that does it. Neville Goddard uh, wanted to be married to his um, second wife. His, he was married when he was 18. Uh, they separated when he was 19. They had one child. Um, they never got divorced. 16 years later, he met the love of his life and he wanted to marry her, but the first wife would not give him a divorce. So much so, she moved out of the state. So legally, it complicated things. And I don't understand what all that is, but it did complicate things. So what did he do? He didn't get all freaked out and, and, and hire the greatest lawyer in, 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 the, in the world. No, he went inside every night before he fell asleep. He imagined that he was living with his, married to his wife and they were sleeping together in their own house. He was beside her every night, sleeping beside her every night. So he did, and he didn't do it for all that long. And then something happened to the first wife where she needed him and he stood up for her. The, the bridge of incidents made it so that Neville was in a position to use his love, to use his heart, and to validate somebody, to stand up for someone, to give them his kindness. And, and it was a legal issue. And what it did was it, it moved her so much that she asked him for the papers I'll sign. And right then and there, she signed the papers and they literally left um, the situation together in a taxi. Friends, not enemies. It's always better to make friends than enemies, right? So anyway, you, all of that <laughs> to tell you that if you are trying to navigate the world between the internal, 
new story that you're telling about your self-concept, about your SP, and really your self-concept should be more in your intentions than the, the SPY because you, everything is you pushed out. So if you have a low self-esteem about yourself, then no matter how much you, you keep saying that that person loves me and adores me, when they do start to show you that your, slow, your low self-esteem is just gonna get in the way again, like it did at, in the first place. So build up your own self-concept, become that person. How would I feel? What would I be like? What's my personality? Am I just, you know, this beautiful, wonderful, handsome person who is poised and serene and calm and confident and loving? and all those wonderful things that you may want to be in, in a loving relationship with the person I want or free of pain and illness, having all the money I need, going on a vacation to wherever and being that person and using more of your, more of your intentions need to be about yourself concept, but you still need intentions for whatever it is you want to manifest, health, SP, money, but make sure you're really working on who you are and seeing yourself be that person because you are creating that person and that person has your special person in it. That person has perfect health. That person is wealthy, abundant, whatever it is your heart's design. And so to navigate the 3D that's opposite of what you are intending internally, visualizing internally, saying to yourself with your inner conversation internally, and then still navigating in the external world is to remind yourself constantly, no matter, because this will, this will stop getting triggered and spiraling, to remind yourself that what I am facing externally is temporary, none of it's real, I'm standing in front of my SP and he's saying everything I don't want to hear and I'm saying, saying inside, he's not real. What is real is that guy that I love inside of me who adores me and loves me. But this guy in the 3D, the flesh and blood, uh-uh, not real. He's an illusion. He's a hologram. He doesn't exist. And he's only temporary because why? The guy inside of me is gonna be pushed out and become my new reality. And that guy that's gonna be pushed out is everything my heart desires to experience with him. You do that for your special person. You do that for your health. When I'm sick and I have an illness, I, don't, I know that the symptoms are temporary because everything in my 3D, it's not real. And I live from what is real, which is inside. I have perfect health. And yes, it takes a concerted effort. It takes work. It's not easy, but it is so worth it. And we get some kind of instant kind of negative gratification of some kind to just dwell and, and wallow in, in the negative story. It feels good in some kind of sick way. Stop that. And stop it as soon as you start to feel because you know your subconscious mind is just so comfortable it's comfortable feeling miserable you've been doing it for so long stop and make yourself feel what you think you can't feel which is happy make yourself think and envision what you think isn't possible because it is possible and live from the end of having what you want. So you have to know exactly what you want and then you have to feel the feelings of already having it. Neville Goddard says this and then I will close this video. It says, when you know what you want, you must deliberately, it doesn't mean half-heartedly, deliberately, not like, well, I will, maybe, depends on how things go. No, you must deliberately focus, give it your attention, your full attention on the feelings of your wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. And he says something else too. Concentrated observing of the thing shuts out other things and causes them to disappear. So when you are in that state of consciously being whatever it is your heart's desiring, health, money, people, whatever you want, you're consciously living from that internally, no matter what's going on in your 3D, and you do it, then the 3D that isn't in your, that you're not thinking about anymore because you're so focused, you're crowding out with your attention on living from the end of having whatever, so that the current 3D has to disappear.
It has to go away. And that's why we say for third parties, don't, don't figure out where they're going and what they're doing. Don't even worry about them. You live from the end of already being married to the person you love, or you live from the end of already living in a loving, committed relationship with that person. You live from the end of having them. And if you have them in the way that your heart's desiring, there's no third party. So why do you have to worry about it? You don't. The more you worry about where they are, what they're doing, and, and, and all that stuff, you're just creating more of that. You don't want that, right? Same thing with symptoms. Don't go online and read everything you possibly can about something. Just say, I'm her, I have perfect health. I don't, I do not look up symptoms and I do not look up stuff. No way. Because then I've got to fight more negative thoughts, more fear. No, I'm perfect health. And I know that my symptoms are only temporary. And you can do that with your parents with aging or anti-aging, whatever it is, money. You live from the end of having whatever it is you want and you give it a concerted effort, so much so that you become that and it crowds out the old story, which is your current 3D reality, and then you are the thing that you want. All of a sudden, one day you realize, oh my gosh, and you don't know how it's gonna show up. You don't know how your recipe is gonna come back. You don't know what's, I mean, just all of a sudden, one day, I don't have pain anymore things that have taken place in the past in my life. You know, all of a sudden one day, um, this is gone. And I'm not going to worry about how. If it, and, and sometimes you can see how, but you don't worry about it in, in, in advance. You just let it happen naturally because you're living from the end of already being whatever. And that whatever doesn't have those debilitating diseases in it. It doesn't have the lack of money in it. It doesn't have the loss of a loved one or the loss of, the, of your SP or, or a third party or any of that. It only has the truth of who you are imagining yourself to be. And that's your consciousness. And I am whatever I am conscious of. Long video, sorry. If you have questions, go ahead and schedule an appointment with me. I love talking with my clients and helping people create the lives their hearts desire. Blessings.